I have done closings, thousands of closings in which the builder has not given the rebate to the signee. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I've done hundreds of closings in which the signee has actually got the rebate if the signee proves to the vendor that he has bought this unit for personal use. But always be beware, the lawyer needs to advise you that there is a possibility that you will not get the rebate from the builder mm -hmm. at the time of the closing. Lawrence back here from Remax Realtron. I'm here again with uh, Diraj Bhatia from Madam Sir Law. Um, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for Diraj. having me again. Topic today is assignments, and this one might be a little bit long, but uh, there's been a lot of talk about assignments. I just wanted to get from the source all the different facets about what you can and can't do and what you should be looking out for when you're assigning. Specifically, um, so assigning or flipping the paper really is uh, what people call is when you're buying a new condo build and let's just say it's built five years from now and maybe three years from now you're selling the paper to somebody else before you actually close on the property. And so uh, Dears, if you can give us a little more talk about um, I guess the whole process and things to look out for. Yeah, so assignments are pretty tricky and not many people know about assignments. So assignment basically means that, as you rightly said, that a buyer has signed an agreement of purchase and sale. Mostly it is a pre-construction condo, mm -hmm. but it can also happen in a resale property. Okay. So it has signed an agreement and the closing is some time away. And for some reason, the buyer does not want to close the transaction with the vendor. Mm -hmm. In most cases, is the builder. So the assigner wants, the buyer wants somebody else to step into the shoes of the buyer. So the buyer becomes the assigner and another person, the second buyer becomes the assignee. So he enters into an assignment agreement in which he says here, this is the agreement of purchase and sale. Instead of me closing the transaction with the builder, you close the transaction. Mm -hmm. There's a separate form. You cannot use the regular agreement of purchase and sale OREA form. There's an assignment of agreement of purchase and sale, which is I believe the OREA form 150. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're required to use. Always make sure that your realtor is experienced enough and knowledgeable enough to prepare the assignment agreement. They are very, very tricky. And always I suggest that you should always have a lawyer. It should always be conditional upon your lawyer's review. Whether you are acting for the assigner or the assignee, it should be reviewed by the lawyer. Assignment agreements are always, always conditional upon the approval of the assignee by the vendor, which mm. is the builder. So these are the basic things that you have to take care of in assignments. Yeah. So basically after, if you were the first assigner, which is you bought a new condo and now you want to sell it to somebody else, which is called the assignee, uh, that person, when they put in an offer, uh, you need it usually uh, approval of all three solicitors, which is the assigner, the assignee, and for the vendor, which is the, the developer of the developer, building. Yes. Great. Um, and then the next question is, what about development fees? So what happens is that, you know, uh, the agreement has been signed by the signer, the original buyer, maybe in some cases years ago. Mm -hmm. So you cannot change anything in that agreement of purchase and sale now. But the assignee, especially the assignee's lawyer, has to go through the original agreement of purchase and sale carefully. Because what happens is in most condos, new condos, there are a lot of levies development costs, educational levies, etc., which may be charged by the city at the time of the closing. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand what is the concept of levies. So whenever a new condo project comes up in any part of the city, say for example, there are 500 condos or 200 condos in a building, those people who will come there to live there, they will use the, the facilities there, there will be a community center there, there will be a library they will use, their kids will go to a school. Mm -hmm. So it will increase pressure on the city to right. provide additional services to that condo project. Mm -hmm. The city will sort of uh, charge the builder for providing those, uh, uh, those okay, services. services. Mm -hmm. Those are called the levies, which are the educational levies or other development costs for the building. The builder typically passes it on to the unit owners. So it is divided among the unit owners. Mm -hmm. It could run into thousands of dollars depending on different project depending on the purchase price. So sometimes the buyer, whether it is an original buyer or the assignee, can be shocked that at the time of the closing, there's twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 extra he has to pay right. to the builder at the time of the that closing. they were not expecting. They were not they expecting, yeah. It was only this much, but now they have this extra $30,000 bill that they have to pay. Yes, and many people are not able to close because they do not have that extra money. Mm -hmm. So the assignee's lawyer has to make sure that the development levies and other such costs are either capped 
mm-hmm. uh, in the original agreement of purchase and sale which if the original buyer had got it reviewed by a lawyer you know that under the condominium act in every condo a builder has to give 10 days cooling off period that right. is under the statute to a buyer mm-hmm. so some people they get it reviewed by a lawyer some people do not so if they have reviewed it the lawyer advise them to cap the fees they have got it capped which is again not a guarantee sometimes the project is so hot the builder says i'm not capping any development mm-hmm. cost you know but in this case the lawyer should advise the signee that the development cost are capped or if they are not capped be aware of it and then only jump into this that if you are able to bear the cost wow a lot of things to think about in terms of the development cost yes um Similarly, uh, in the same vein, uh, the original assigner, they're also still liable if the assignee cannot close. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Even if the builder, some people think that if the vendor approves the assignee, then the uh, assigner is and, off the and hook. And it's like hands off, here you go and I'm done. Right? Yes, that's not the that case. That is not the case. In all the assignments and approvals that I've seen by the vendor, the vendor always approves the assignee, but there's always a clause, always a rider there that if so, for some reason, the assignee defaults on the terms of the agreement, uh, the original agreement of right. purchase and sale, the assigner will still remain liable. Uh, and that is why, again, we want to vet to make sure the assignee is good and both the assigner will want to vet them and also the vendor will want to yes. vet them as well just to make sure that they can close. So they Absolutely. Really care about. And what about HST issues in terms of it? I mean, that is a little sticky because I mean, HST is very interesting depending on how you define it. But could you give us a little bit of your opinion on HST? So HST is a very, very detailed topic, which I can do a seminar for two hours. It's probably true. Yeah, (laughs) but in nutshell, HST is the harmonized sales tax. And many people say, oh, you know, there's no HST on the purchase price. That's not true. HST is not a private tax that you and I charge. HST is charged by the government, the federal and the Ontario government. So you always have to pay HST. Uh, most condos they have HST included in the purchase price but you still have to pay HST Mm -hmm. now the builders what they say is that if most condos they what they say is that if the buyer has bought the property as a principal residence for use as a principal residence Mm -hmm. not an investment property then the builder will give a rebate in the HST Mm -hmm. at the time of the closing to the buyer Again, it's the word rebate, not a waiver. Many people think that rebate means that you will not have to pay any HST. Mm -hmm. That's not true. It's only a portion of the HST which is granted as a rebate up to a maximum of 24,000. So if the HST is say $80,000, that entire HST will not be waived off by the builder. Mm -hmm. They will only give a discount of up to 24,000. Rest of the HST would have to be paid. But in assignments, the moment the original buyer assigns it to the assignee many builders even though they approve of the assignee uh, assignee their liabilities are the same they say the moment the buyer has assigned it Mm -hmm. we are not going to give you the rebate i have done closings thousands of closings in which the builder has not given the rebate to the assignee Mm -hmm. at the same time i've done hundreds of closings in which the assignee has actually got the rebate if the assignee proves to the vendor that he has bought this unit for personal use. But always be beware, the lawyer needs to advise you that there's a possibility that you will not get the rebate from the builder Mm -hmm. at the time of the closing. So what happens is you have to cough up extra cash to be given to the vendor. But if it is for your personal residence, after the closing, as per the law that stands today, in April of 2019, Mm -hmm. just to clarify that if you keep the unit for one year, you can claim the same amount of rebate of up to 24,000 from the CRA. What is required is you have to show the agreement of purchase and sale, Mm -hmm. the copy of the assignment agreement, the statement of adjustments from the vendor showing that you did not get the rebate. So either you can claim it as your principal residence or even if it is your investment property, you can claim it from the CRA after the closing provided you can show that there is a one year written lease agreement signed for the unit. Right. And so a lot of the times would you say that maybe an investor would buy it and then rent it out for a year before yes. they resell it? Is that typically yes. what so a lot of them would do? The, what an investment per investor can do is the investor can buy the unit and you know most investors rent it out even during the occupancy period. Yeah. So the builder will not give them the rebate at the time of the closing. Immediately afterwards they can apply. They don't need to wait for the year to Mm -hmm. pass by to apply for the rebate. They can apply for the rebate immediately after the final closing. Mm -hmm. All they need to show, as I said, is the agreement, the statement of adjustments showing that they did not get the rebate as well as a copy of the lease agreement. 
Usually CRA takes about two to three months to give the rebate back. But the moment you get the rebate, you cannot sell it for one year from the date of the final closing. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you sell it, you will have to pay the rebate back right. uh, to the CRA and sometimes with penalties as well. Wow, more things that you know that uh, really, really helpful. Uh, another point is about a lot of builders have a clause in their schedule for MLS advertising, I guess, yes. in terms of the assignments. So a lot of them do allow assignments, but they seem to also have a clause in there that says you can't advertise in the MLS. Yes. So what happens is that, you know, many, as I said, many agreements do not have an assignment clause or have a limited assignment mm -hmm. clause, or you can buy an amendment, get a assignment clause, a specific assignment clause from the builder. But most builders, they put a clause there that you can assign subject to conditions, of course, and subject to the vendor's approval, right. but you cannot advertise it on the MLS. Mm -hmm. The reason being that the builder does not want everybody to know that this property is, uh, this building is only being occupied by uh, by investors who are now trying to flip. Right. So the, it might create a rumor in the market mm -hmm. that this is not a good project, people are not closing the transactions and, and they are assigning. So builder doesn't want that. So unless and until you have got a specific uh, permission from the vendor in the amendment or in the agreement of purchase and sale, <laughs> your realtor cannot uh, advertise it on the MLS. And, and you really shouldn't because I have heard stories where someone did advertise on the MLS and then that contract was rescinded or there was penalties, right? The, yes, the contract can be rescinded by the builder yeah. or the builder can uh, can withdraw the permission for the assignment. Mm -hmm. In what in one case, what, I happened, what happened was that my client uh, represented to the vendor that he has bought it for personal use. Mm -hmm. The market was very hot a couple of years ago. He tried to uh, advertise it on the MLS for assignment. Right. Assignment, the builder gave notice. He took it off the MLS. Ultimately, you know, he, he couldn't assign it. Mm -hmm. At the time of the final closing, he found that the builder has refused the rebate. Oh. Even though he was going to now occupy it at personal mm -hmm. use, the builder said by advertising it on the MLS, you have shown your intention that you are not a principal uh, principal occupant. <laughs> wow, just got to be careful about all that yes. paperwork. That's why you need a lawyer and a professional just to make sure that the paperwork is good. So I guess in the end, what is your opinion on assignments? Like should people buy an assignment or not buy an assignment? See, there are pros and cons. Mm -hmm. You know, pros and cons. Uh, uh, the pros of buying on assignment is that, you know, you're getting, first of all, you're getting a new property, mm -hmm. you know, your new property. Secondly, in many cases, you know, the original buyer bought the property maybe a couple of years or three, four years ago. And the original buyer, even though maybe taking a profit, still that could be a good deal as compared to buying, uh, buying fresh from the vendor right. in today's date. Uh, today's date. In some cases, the assignment may be on, on the cost price of the original buyer. Secondly, that ever since the orig original buyer bought it a few years ago, the condo is now ready for completion or mm -hmm. just about being ready for completion. But if the assignee buys, a, buys an under construction agreement from the builder directly, the closing could be three, four years away, right? right? So there are some benefits. On the other hand, you know, you have to be careful, as I said, that on assignment, you cannot renegotiate the deal with the builder. What the original buyer has dealt with the builder, it could be a good hand. It's just like Whatever playing, they playing cards. three or four years ago, yes. the hand that they had yeah, is hand. all they have. Right? So that's all you're getting. You cannot negotiate anything from the builder, you know? Okay. So you just have to be careful to pick and choose which is a good deal on assignment. Wow. Hopefully that was a lot of good information in terms of assignment. I wanted to thank you, Ash, for joining us here today. It's my pleasure. And if please. you have any more questions about assignments, please contact uh, Dear Vatia anytime. Well, thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>